I just hope any person that comes through in the faith gets as much out of it as I have. There's this misconception in the world that people who are homeless do deserve the situation that they're in. Staff members treat you just like you are a human being. To make a difference in their life is it's humbling and it keeps me coming back. Finding resources to sustain our mission is critical. To anybody in a situation like me, it's, it's a miracle. Here's a place that does anything for you. I mean, I never thought I'd go to a psychiatrist, but I went. Therapists, doctors, just about everything you need is here. Everybody is here because they have a medical issue that is the, the trigger that brings them to Interfaith House. And nobody leaves here without having completed their medical recovery and being ready to move on to take care of themselves and to move into a, a more stable housing situation. At a normal shelter, you come in usually at 7 o'clock at night, leave at 7 o'clock in the morning. At Interfaith, you're here 24 hours a day. As the only respite shelter in Chicago, I cannot imagine what would happen to the homeless population in Chicago um, without Interfaith House, without a place for the people that are the most sick, but not really sick enough to be in the hospital. Where is that segment of the population going to go other than Interfaith House? We really try to break the cycle of homelessness, provide permanent solutions, show people that by giving medical care, job placement, benefits, and working with our residents, we can truly show them a pathway out of their poverty and into mainstream society again. They're going to take care of all of you, not just, um, you know, some of you, you know, getting you, you know, some meds or something like that. They want to make sure that uh, it's not just to get you in housing, get you out of the way. Make sure that you're a whole person. With health care the way that it is, we have so many people who may just have a broken bone and not be able to have their job any longer, which makes them lose their health care. And because of not having proper health care, they lose their home. That cycle of homelessness and ill health gets broken here at Interfaith House. Um, without it, the homeless regenerate to the hospital and then they're back on the street, they're back in the hospital. I think what people don't realize when they go to work and they see people who are homeless on the streets and that's their only vision is they never get a name and a face and a story behind what's going on in those individuals lives. I had uh, a problem with substance abuse. I was I was an addict. I was a cocaine addict and a heroin addict. When you think about Ralph, I think he's like, you know, the manifestation of what Interfaith House is trying to accomplish with our clients. I started to develop a liking for the program. It, it began to change me in ways that I never thought possible. I think Ralph is what we'd like to see because not just that he was able to uh, accept the services here without question, it's what he's done since he's left here. Interfaith uh, created a lasting change in my life. Uh, it made me the successful person that I am today. I was uh, hired on by a company that uh, sold meat. And I stayed with that company about a year and a half until I learned how to do it on my own. I saved enough money while working for that company to uh, purchase my own truck. And today I'm a, I'm a successful meat purveyor. And we measure our success not by the money we get, not by any other stuff. It's the people and the change in their lives. At Interfaith House, our care is primary care. Anything that a patient needs short of an appendectomy here in the clinic, we'll be able to do. Patients that are seeing us recognize more value in getting that primary care with us, and they're much more likely to follow up with a primary care doctor after they leave. We also can do things that are very simple, that cost very little money and take very little time, but still keep people off the street and, more importantly, out of the emergency room. 
that I heard was about this gentleman named Thaddeus Williams. And he's known like all over throughout Chicago. And I heard that he will tug at some areas in your life that you would rather not talk about. And if you're ready, you know, make, uh, make some real meaningful steps toward recovery. No matter what they come in with, no matter what their circumstances have been, no matter whether they've been to prison or no matter what it is, they deserve from us unconditionally to be positive with them. The clients feel safe enough to talk about some of the most horrible things that ever happened to them. They talk about molestation, they talk about horrible things in childhood, things that brought them to the place that they are in life, not just physically but emotionally. Then we just operate with them from where they are, not where we want them to be, not where we think they should be, just where they are. And in a hope and an attempt that the environment will foster something on the inside of them that, that helps to effectuate change. You walk in and you might be nervous the first time you come because you're not sure what homelessness is all about, you're not sure what you can do as a volunteer, but all that's wiped away in five minutes once you sit down and start talking to the people who work here and to the people who live here. I will meet with a volunteer and spend a lot of time brainstorming with them because it's really important to us that all our volunteers are doing something that they're really genuinely enjoying. I've worked in a lot of volunteer organizations and Interfaith House is one of those very rare ones where you actually get really meaningful interactions with the residents. Sherry was a little shy at first, but then you know she explained to me about her family and they all live in the Chicago area and how close they are. There were all these pictures of them at barbecues and such. So it was fun to like get a glimpse of like her family life. I saw her daughter, pictures from when her daughter was younger. Next time that happens, I'm hoping to snag an invite to Sherry's family barbecue. The group of people that a person will be working with uh, are great people here, a lot of fun, um, and there are some great events that I don't think other auxiliary boards will have. A lot of our volunteers, um, particularly our associate board, have developed professionally through their volunteer experience. Um, it's a great networking opportunity. I think it's important to get involved with organizations like Interfaith House from the very beginning to lay a foundation for your professional career and for your adult life that says being involved in the community and volunteering is going to be an integral part of who I am as an individual. This particular organization does so much good, it's so unique that you've got to really sit down with somebody and explain what it does and, and the fact that it helps so many people and that there's nothing else like it in the city. I realized soon after coming that it was what the residents had to teach me that was more important in that interaction. What they have to teach you about strength and about hope for the future and about enduring things you might not have thought you were capable of enduring. If your name is not on a, a lease or a deed, if you don't have keys, state of Illinois, you're homeless. A lot of folks don't know what that, what that feels like to have their name on a lease. I haven't experienced that in about four or five years. And when I came through the door and I was told that there's a housing advocate on site, my, my immediate thoughts were, were I, I, you know, I could breathe a little easy. We have the health and housing outreach team that goes to residents' new homes once a week and makes sure that they're following up with their medical appointments. They're, they have food, they have no problems with their landlords, and helps mediate any circumstances that arise. And Aunt Pam came over, checked it out, it was a blessing, and they stayed up there for uh, about an hour and a half. We were talking about different things, and that was all great, you know, that, they're just great people, you know. It's really exciting to see them move into their own places and for them to take the things that they've learned into the next phase of their lives. I couldn't imagine it being this big. This is a dream, a dream come true, you know. If you get blessed, you should be a blessing to someone else. Any blessing you get, you should, you should be a blessing to someone else. It's great that we exist, but it's sad that there aren't more places like this, because if there were more places like this, then the people who you see on the street might not be on the street. Yeah.